regression is a statistical method used to establish um, a relationship between a dependent variable in our case here y which also we, is known as the target variable or response variable and one or more uh, independent variables uh, this is actually our input variables okay or uh, predictive variables now it this is where we um, this technique involves the um, analyzing the relationship between a set of input variables could be x1 x2 x3 and our output or target variable to understand how these input variables affect the output variables now the objective or the goal of um, regression analysis is to estimate the strength and direction of the relationship okay this strength and direction is um, also called the coefficient okay of the relationship between the variables and to use this relationship to make prediction about the value of the dependent variable, what we want to predict for new or future values, right, of this independent uh, or input variables. Now, this regression uh, analysis uh, can be used in many uh, uh, fields like finance, economics, and engineering, just to name a few. Okay. Now, in this video, we're going to go over uh, some of the top algorithms or regression algorithms that. Um, you know, I used in uh, Weka. We'll see how it works. Some of the parameters uh, uh, will be uh, demonstrated in Weka. Um, but to do this, let's open our data set. So we're going to be using a data set from the regression uh, folder. This is the housing uh, data set, which essentially is just the uh, Boston uh, a suburb uh, data set. So this Boston data set has 13 uh, numerical input variables. So when you open this in your um, editor, you can actually go through some of the uh, uh, attribute information ranging from uh, median value owner occupied homes in the thousands. So you can just quickly review all this, but essentially here you can see they have varying scales, right? You can see here, we have real, uh, actually all these are actually numeric variables, right? So once we've established that, uh, we've loaded that and you can see they have 13 variables and the last variable here usually is the class. Uh, and then this is numeric, right? Now to start us off, uh, the next thing we wanna do here uh, is to open the uh, classify button, right? So let's go to classify here. Uh, under the, um, the choose button, let's select the linear regression and that will be under the uh, functions uh, group so click on that and worker automatically uh, knows that from our data set right this is numeric our y actually is numeric so it will just gray out all the other classification algorithms so in our case here we want to click on linear regression okay so once we select the linear regression uh, you might want to click on the um, the name of the algorithm to, so that we can uh, access the parameters, okay? So some of the things I just wanna go over here, for example, um, one of the key parameter here, okay? So let's say, for example, um, you know, you your performance is actually an, an issue in your model, right? So in, in uh, linear regression, uh, the performance of your training uh, uh, data can be negatively uh, affected by correlated data, right? Now, Weka can actually take care of this by removing highly correlated uh, input variables, okay, or attributes automatically by setting this attribute called eliminate collinear uh, attribute. By default, it's actually set to true, okay? Uh, additionally, here we can see that um, one of the things that can imp uh, negatively impact your output variable uh, or performance is uh, something to do with feature selection, right? So feature selection, we want to just select the relevant attributes, okay? So by setting this attribute, uh, what is this? Uh, by setting this attribute selection method here, uh, these are the two uh, options there. Uh, this just helps with, um, you know, ensuring that worker, uh, you know, automatically uh, decides what are the relevant attributes. So this is just gonna help with improving the performance, okay? Uh, finally, another attribute I just want to talk about is the ridge regularization here. Okay, now this ridge regularization is just a technique to uh, reduce the uh, the phenomenon of uh, overfitting. 
essentially this just to you know reduce the complexity of your learned uh, model okay so to do this you know how it works is just minimizes the square of the absolute sum of squared uh, learned coefficients right uh, which sort of just prevents you know the coefficients from becoming too large uh, essentially it just gives a penalty uh, uh, on large weights okay but let me use an example here so um so let's say uh, so coefficients basically are just numeric variables right that represent the strength and direction of the relationship between the variables in our regression model okay now so let's look at an example here so suppose we have the following uh, regression right a linear regression model we have the following equation right so y equals to beta uh, beta uh, not or zero plus better uh, beta one times x x here let's say um, we want to predict the how uh, the price of a house based on the size of the house in square feet so x here you can replace this with the uh, the size of the house in uh, square feet right so let's say in this case, right, the um, the beta naught here. What that means, this is just the y-intercept, okay, which represents the value of y when actually x is zero, okay. When x is zero, okay, this is the value that represents the value of y, okay. So in this context, we can say uh, beta represents the base price of a house that is assumed to be zero uh, square feet. Okay, then uh, uh, beta one here is just a regression coefficient, which represents uh, a, a change in unit, one change of unit um, in Y for one change in unit in X, okay? So this is actually what beta one means, okay? Again, a change in unit of, uh, in Y, uh, in y uh, represent a change in unit in X, okay? So using an example here, so suppose we want to estimate the price of a house, right? Um, and this, let's say the beta, beta not here, uh, beta, let's say here, beta is uh, 50,000, okay? So let's say that's 50,000, okay, right? Okay, and then the beta one, uh, we want to say this is maybe $100 uh, uh, per square feet, okay? Now, the price of the house in this case then y will be so we're just gonna add this so 50k so for 50,000 okay we add 100 right 100 here will be our beta uh, beta one here times right let's say uh, the square feet here so the size here x let's say is 1,500 okay the square feet okay so this is the square feet right now so our predicted y here will be adding all this right this will give us two hundred thousand okay okay so overall here uh, based on our linear reg uh, regression model here we can predict that the house of the price given the size in square feet which is just 1500 square feet okay this the price of this house is likely to be uh, about two hundred thousand okay all right, now that we know that, and so we have a ridge here parameter, so just click on okay. So the next thing we're gonna do here uh, is to now go and choose, um, you know, we just let the default as 10, right? And then we just click on start, right? From here, we can already see that um, the, the following, um, you know, summary, right? So again, here, we're gonna be using RMSC. You can see our RMSC is 4.9. Okay, so what that means, RMSC actually just stands for root mean squared error. Okay, uh, this is just a measure of the difference between the actual values and the predicted values of the model, right? So in this case, in regression analysis, we use this RMSC, okay, um, uh, to as, as a measure of accuracy of a predicted model. So in our case here, this 4.9 essentially just means that on average, our predicted values, right, of these models are off by maybe uh, actually 4.9 units from the actual values, okay? Uh, again, just a word of caution here, uh, you know, you just have to be very careful. So for example, you know, an RMSC of 4.9 uh, may be considered why, especially if you have values that are predicted in the range of maybe uh, zero uh, to 10, okay? But however, you might have some values maybe ranging from a thousand here, Okay, 
a thousand to maybe uh, five thousand. Okay, so when we have that, we can consider that an RMSC of four point nine. Okay, uh, this could be considered as you know, uh, essentially this would be considered um, uh, low. Okay, so therefore, um, just make sure to consider the context of the analysis when interpreting the RMSC value. Next, we're going to be looking at uh, KNN algorithm. 